Hello YouTube. Uh, I've had more than one YouTube viewer ask me how to troubleshoot the desulfator because it's not working or it doesn't seem to be working. So we're going to go through the first few things to basically figure out is it working or not. Um, if you hooked up the LED as I showed you I believe it was the third video it'll be lit. Another good thing is there's no smoke coming out because you'll find that out in about a second. Um, another thing to look for is an audible tone. You can usually hear a one kilohertz tone. It sounds like a nice little hum. Um, I picked up on one of my other videos. It might pick up on this one. It might not because I got the camera a little further away from it. Um, the next thing to do is make sure your wires are at least 12 gauge, 10 gauge or thicker is preferable and is a short run. Each of my wires running to this battery pack I have here is about 8 inches on each side. The shorter the better because the longer it is the more you will quench or suffocate the pulse that's supposed to do the desulfation. Another thing is make sure your batteries are at least a minimum of 11 and a half volts. So, we'll test our ports, and you'll see this battery pack is rusting at 12.71 volts. So, the battery's got enough voltage to power the desulfator and work. Next thing is, make sure you have the right voltage going to your 555 timer chip. Make sure you use the D timer chip that I specified because there are many variations of this. There's a lower powered version and a higher powered version. You need the higher powered version to drive the MOSFET correctly. To make sure this has the right amount of power, anything, I believe it's from 5 to 15 volts. We take pin 1 and pin 8. And see I got 6.4 volts if I can get a good connection. There you go which means the chip is getting the correct amount of power through it. Another thing to check is make sure you have your resistors and your little setup for capacitors set up correctly for the 555 timer so it's setting out the correct pulse to the MOSFET to turn it on and off. The way to do that is to make sure your meter has a Hertz and duty cycle. Turn the backlight back on. And uh, first thing we're going to check the Hertz. Remember, this is a one kilohertz design. So, negative probe to negative, positive probe to pin three on the triple five chip. That is your output. And you will see we have 1.2 kilohertz, which is actually just a little bit higher. And the chip runs nice and cool, so we're not overheating it. So, this design works pretty good. We'll also check the duty cycle. The original design is about 5% on, 95% off. So, when we read this, again, negative probe and positive. You see, we're running about 7% on. So, it's running a little bit more than the original spec, but everything runs in the correct temperature range. And the inductors are not saturating for being on and off a little bit more so this runs a little bit better than the original spec that's why this works really well and one other thing you can also check once we switch back to voltage and turn the backlight back on again is your output pulse this will show what your voltage spike is before your battery absorbs it I gotta turn this camera around just a little bit so you can see where my little part is. And if I also show on the diagram real quick, I might have gotten this wrong on one of my other videos. You are basically measuring across this capacitor, not the diode, just positive here, negative there, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter on a multimeter, it'll just read negative. What you want to see is the number. Remember, this is a 60 volt uh, ceramic capacitor. And we're looking for anything roughly between 25 to 60 volts. Um, the lower the number, the less sulfated the battery is, and it's accepting the charge better. So 
we are going to check that now. Negative and positive. Or one. There we go. 41.1 volts over the capacitor. Make sure you do not touch the diode because you'll get a wrong reading. And that shows me that it is receiving a pulse. If you wanted to make sure that your battery is also being desulfated over time, you would check this voltage um, probably about two days in from a desulfation process to see where your initial voltage runs and then check it once a week and watch it slowly drop. As long as it's slowly dropping, it means it's doing its job. The battery is getting desulfated and is accepting the pulses much more easily. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comments and I will get back to you. Thanks.